Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 30 of Forgecraft, where I went ahead between episodes and set up the new Metacraft assembly line. Dun dun dun! So as a reminder, uh, this thing's pretty easy to set up. We just crafted the stuff between episodes and placed it down. So you need the assembly controller, you need the, uh, you need an export unit and an import unit. Import takes from a chest and puts it on the thing to be processed. And then export unit takes the thing off the thing and then puts it in the chest, I think-ish. Um, and then laser and drill for crafting. Oh, pup, I have questions for you later. I have questions for pup later. Uh, so that's the gist of how it works. So one of the things we definitely want to make is the advanced pressure tube. That's going to give us tubes that can handle pressure a little bit better. And I might, I might go ahead and uh, rearrange some of my machinery here um, to kind of allow it to have more, uh, like we'll have like a high pressure line and a low pressure line. Does that sound fun? So we're about to find out if a merged program can run both programs. Though I don't think that's a good test because this one actually needs both, doesn't it? Uh, yes, he needs both to make the advanced pressure tube. So this is not a good test, but we'll find out. So if we put that in there, whoop, he's running. And I've got a couple speed upgrades in here because the arms are a little bit slow if you don't give them speed upgrades. And then look, it does a little bit of drill action. How cool is that? How cool is that? I love it. I love it. And then the laser comes in and goes Meow. See, I should do all sound effects for all mods. I don't know I don't know anybody who could disagree with my sound effects. And then this guy comes over and extracts the thing uh, and puts it into the chest. How cool is that? And if we wanted to, we could throw a few more speed upgrades in here to make this process that much quicker. Zoop, 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 zoop. Super cool. I'm assuming that you're okay in terms of pressure. Yeah, you're getting there. I think I might be using a bit too much pressure with such a high speed upgrade level, but man, eh, it's all good. So yeah, we've got advanced pressure tubes. How cool is that? A stronger version of the basic pressure tube. It can be camouflaged and two modules can be placed on it to provide additional functionality. I like it. Uh, the other thing we might want to make is a flux compressor if we can. Now, uh, now that we have advanced pressure tubes, we can do this easily. We're going to need some more printed circuit boards, which always require capacitors and transistors. So we should probably just get some more of those, right? So we should probably get another 32-ish plastic. And I also need slime balls. Is slime balls a thing that we can make in the pressure tuber duder? Yes, it is, with green dye and a bucket of milk. That's cool. That's cool. We should very much be looking into that. Somebody should investigate that, because that is a cool plan. All right, let me get some slime balls via buckets of milk. And we will come back in a minute to uh, that. I think, I think Soren has a, I thought Soren had a cow over here. Do we not have cows? You got it, Alpec. I need a cow and then we'll be talking. What do we have that can pick up entities on the server? Somebody killed all my sheep and cows. I know I had one at some point. What do we have that can pick up entities on the server? I think we have mob imprisonment tools, don't we? Yes, we do. If we have gas tiers, for that matter. And it requires plastic from foregoing, which I may or may not have just yet. I remember finding cows was a challenge last time I tried. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. All right, let me come back in a minute after I find a cow. There's a cow. Found a cow. 
on my mini map. So we're not coming back in a minute after we find a cow because we found a cow. Somebody else's cow, but I can still help them. Sweet. And he's not far from my base, so that's okay with me. All right. So then over here, we can get some more cactus dye. So we've got, or I'm sorry, green of you, right? And then it's just... I'm going to put some speed upgrades in you. Can I not put speed upgrades in? Oh, that's the pressure chamber. No, we want to put the speed up chamber in the pressure chamber interface. And that'll make the door opening a little bit faster right see how much faster the door opening goes 100 percent worth it to do that upgrade by the way cool and then slime balls is a thing so i think i need how many slime balls do you need elpec Awesome. I should give that guy some speed upgrades too, to be fair. I should make more speed upgrades, to be fair. Eight would be more than enough? You got it, buddy. I'll just go get more milk. Milk plus four green dye equals slime ball in here. There's an input and output chest anytime you need. Cool. All right, so that's cool. So we'll get more green dye. And we'll get the... Did we get the empty buckets out? We did. Look at that. It was smart enough to know that it crafted with the buckets and therefore should give me my buckets back. And I didn't have to toggle that little button that says crafting mode or not crafting mode. How great is that? All the milk. All the milk. Whee! Boop, 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 boop. And we'll be back in a minute. All right, guys, we're back. So the crafting of the transistors and capacitors is now complete, uh, and we can make the printed circuit board. I'd also like to make, real quick, an advanced PCB, which is going to be used in a minute. So we're going to want that as a reminder of things to come. And then we might as well just make all the printed circuit boards that we have. Because why not? Because why not? Because we're going to want a regulator tube in a minute. So flux capacitors should be exceedingly close to being craftable, right? We're going to need a compressed iron gear. Uh, we're going to need a blast furnace, which doesn't look too terrible. But we're going to want some doubly smelted stone for that one, aren't we? Minecraft with its doubly smelted stone. Very confusing to me, guys. Very, very confusing to me. So that should be most of the things I need. Now we just need some of you. And whatever this turbine rotor is. So it's turbine blades, which is a redstone and two gold. Which is a redstone and two gold. Right? <laughs> I like having my own emotes on the server. <laughs> That's cool. All right, so I made one extra, because why not? Uh, but then you can be, oh, that's neat, flow detector tube. Nice. All right, so that's you. So now you are responsible for making that is pretty cool. That is cool, because now we can just use RF power to do the thing. RF turns into compressed, right? So now what I think I'd like to do, two things. Well, ish. Well, mm, uh, maybe, we'll see. Uh, but basically what I'd love to do, are you guys not, did I math you wrong? Because I don't think I did, but maybe I did uh, turn that off. Oh, was it two redstone and one gold? Eh, it might have been. Totally math it wrong. Doesn't matter. 
So, what I think I want to do is pretty much tear most of this up. Um, and do a high pressure line and a low pressure line. And what we'll do, like this machine cannot accept high pressure. I don't know what machines can accept high pressure. I don't think there's a lot, to be honest with you. I don't think there's a lot of machines that can accept high pressure. Like this guy can. And I'm sure there's a couple other advanced machines that can, but most of this stuff you're looking at is gonna be, I'm guessing vortex tubes can, because they don't really indicate if they can or not. I wasn't sure, I don't know. Uh, but we'll consider them as a possibility. Um, and then there's also the security upgrades for machines so that what these do adds a built-in safety valve to the machine, automatic releasing some air if the pressure would rise into the danger zone. So that's cool, right? But I feel like that's a waste of air pressure, right? Like we don't want to do that. We want to build the lines properly. Otherwise we're, we're wasting air pressure, right? Yeah, I think that's an accurate assessment. So we will try to avoid doing that. So I'm gonna rearrange some of my stuffs here so that we can run everything off a single flux compressor. We'll have a high pressure line and a low pressure line, and then we'll see what happens. And then the next thing I wanna do is play with drones. All right, guys, we are back. And as a result, I'm gonna start breaking things. That's what I do. And no one should be surprised. Let's put you back on one by one and precision true. Cool. All right, so we're gonna try to create what's effectively gonna be a high pressure and a low pressure line. Um, so this guy can definitely accept high pressure, but like, I don't know what else can. Can anything else accept high pressure? I mean, I'm sure there's other things that can accept high pressure, just I haven't found them yet. <laughs> That's the problem, I ain't found them yet. I ain't found them yet. Okay, and I kind of want you. Can I break you without breaking you? I guess we're gonna find out. The answer is a no. Big old nope, not, not the way it works. All right, cool. So let's set it up so that we've got like the flux compressor here with a quantum entangle over there set to private DW20 power with a side config on power of auto eject on. Oh, hello. You can be a high signal, thanks. High signal, thanks. So this guy produces lots of gas, right? Um, now we wanna probably rotate him so that he's doing this guy, right? And then what we'll do is we will put there's like a valve we can do, kind of like this one for the most part, the regulator tube modular. So regulator tube is what we want. We want another one of these, yes. So that means two more U. One, two of U, and then the regulator tube. And we want to make sure we know what direction it is. So the big end to the small end, right? And the small end is the part that gets restricted, which makes sense, which makes sense. And if we apply an advanced PCB to this guy, it means that we can use him and have a UI. So when this is checked, you can define the behavior in a more advanced way. That's what I want. Cool. All right. Neat. Um, I just need to figure out what that is. <laughs> In this interface, you can define exactly how a module should behave depending on the redstone signal. The signal will be proportional to the pressure interpolated between the lower and higher bounds. So in other words, uh, I want you to be at 4.9. That's basically 
what I want. That's what I want, right? With this setting, it means I will only let 4.9 pounds of pressure into the smaller side, regardless of redstone signal. If I wanted redstone signal to have some measure of change here, like I could have it so that like with this setting, it would probably be something like this setting, right? So if redstone signal is off, it'll be at five. And if redstone signal is at a full 15, it would be at 15. And then whatever redstone number is in, like if it was like a redstone signal of 11, it would be somewhere in the middle, right? But we want 4.9 on both ends, right? I think that would be cool. And that should only allow 4.9 through. Boop. Sweet. So now I can give you a redstone signal and we'll see what you do, buddy. Please no blow ups. Sweet. And then you can have some speed upgrades. So you are pressure wise making 16, but I'm gonna give you a good old seven there. Now you're making 532 milliliters of pressure per tick. Oh, and you're doing temperature things. I need to figure out what temperature means for you. What does temperature mean for you? Does keeping you cold equal better? Because that would be cool. Right, so this guy should never go above five-ish. So see how this is at five, and this guy's staying around four point something-ish? So that's neat. So five pounds of pressure. So far, so good. Right, and building up a lot. I'm assuming that you need to be kept cool. I'm assuming that you need to be kept cool, because it seems like he's producing less 452. As his temperature increases, he's he's lowering the production. So he needs to be kept cool. Okay, so we can handle that with a vortex guy, right? I love these vortex guys and I love that I get to use them all the time. They're super fun. But meanwhile, he's still building up pressure. So he's at like eight bars of pressure, but over here, see, we're still at like a nice four point something. You know what wouldn't be a terrible idea? Replacing all these guys with advanced tubes, but still keeping the pressure at five. Because that would just mean that the pressure can go through faster. Because I think equalizing the pressure across all these tubes is slower because they're the basic tubes. I think this one would be more efficient at doing that. So we should replace all the tubes with that stuff. But yeah, we'll get there in a minute. So let's see about keeping you cool, chief. Right? So now your temperature should start dropping if I give you a heat sink on the hot side. Oh, you need a connector, huh? Okay, well, let's do this. And that. So now your temperature should drop significantly, I would hope. Ish, significantly ish. Man, he is not dropping, is he? <laughs> he's, he's actually still climbing. We may need, uh, for this many speed upgrades, right? If I take the speed upgrades out, I presume what's going to happen is the temperature is going to drop. Yeah, that's what I would expect, right? And then your temperature is pretty hot. So we might want to adjust our positioning here to get it away from the main line um, so we can give more room for heat dissipation and more vortex dudes, right, to keep this thing cool. I think that's a smart move. I think that's a smart move. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a definitely a good move. Uh, let's put away some things I don't super duper need at this exact minute because obvious inventory issues are obvious. Um, So what we'll do, I put away all my dirt, like a derp, but that's okay. Cool. What I think I'm going to do is replace these guys all with advanced pressure tubes real quick. Do I have enough advanced pressure tubes to replace all these? I would say so. I wish I could like, boom, but no. Cool, I like this. Server, please. Make in progress.
but yeah, having everybody be an advanced tube is definitely going to be useful, right? I like that. All right, so you're going to be an advanced tube. And you guys are all pretty empty as it is, so it's all good. And then you connect here like that, and then you're going to have this guy do that. And that seems fine to me, right? And you guys should have basically no pressure going on right now. Perfect. That's what I would expect. Great. All right. Nice. So then now we're going to give this guy a lot more room to breathe. Uh, and then, like I said, we'll probably have the high pressure machines over on this side. So let's put our flux compressor here then. Okay. And then you... We'll do that. And then you're going to get the advanced PCB on this. And you're going to be the advanced config 4.9. 4.9. Okay. So that's cool. And then you can have your vortex tube on this side. Cool. With let's do a compressed iron block with several heat sinks. That sounds smart. And I might need a couple of these, so let's do a couple of them. We'll be prepared for what's going to be probably a handful of heat sinks going on, and a couple of vortex tubes. Okay. So you're going to want to do this with a couple of heat sinks, right? Ba -doop, ba -doop. Cool. And you're getting the pressure from that. Um, then in addition, we will probably want another vortex tube here with you. And probably a couple of heat sinks here. Cool. And if that's not sufficient, then we will do more. Okay. So you're limiting to 4.9 bars of pressure in these tubes, so they shouldn't be allowed to go above 4.9. Uh, you're going to need power. And you're going to be connected to DW20 power. And you should be getting power now. Now you just need a redstone signal to activate, because I think you're still on redstone equals active mode. Yes, enable on high signal with a lever. Cool. So you're producing 16 milliliters. If I put seven in there, we'll see what happens to the temperature. Temperature's climbing, surprisingly. Surprisingly. That temperature is still climbing. But look how much pressure you're producing, which is cool. I love it. But yeah, the temperature is still unable to handle it. What if I just put heat sinks like here? Would that be a cool idea? I mean, that works, right? Not quite enough. I think a vortex tube would be better. What do you think you're doing, Plague Doctor? No. No. Go away. Bad rats. Bad rats. Sorry. Interrupted rudely. Hey, I got a rat upgrade fragment. Rare drop from rats. Okay, so uh, you are still not capable of being cool, are you? So we might want another vortex tube. Now, are you guys reasonably being helpful here? Yeah, I think you're doing a pretty good job. And then pressure tube on you. Are you cooling off yet? Oh my goodness, he's still gaining in temperature. Holy cow, that is hilarious. Wow, wow. You are just having a really bad time, aren't you? Keeping that stuff's cool. And I can make a few more heat sinks.
I don't know how much this whole like block with heat sinks around it is in any way better, right? Because your east temperature is still 55, right? So what if we just replaced you with a straight up heat sink? Right? East temperature, all right, definitely higher than 55. So, you know, I think it's, it's worth it to have you here. Right? So definitely higher than 55 if I throw the heat sink on there. He slowed down his temperature gain, but he's still going up. So if I throw a few more on, he's down at 55, which is helpful. You are at 48, just being surrounded by heat sinks. And then of course, you don't have a ton of pressure just yet. So the thing to note here, if we take some of these out, I'm sure there's a point where it stops even making it worth it, right? Um, so we're gonna have to figure out if there's a better way to cool this because we have a lot of vortex tubes on this dude and it doesn't seem to be doing much at the moment, but higher pressure might work. So like if we let pressure build up a little bit, that might be cool. That might be an approach, right? So, but you can definitely handle the, the high pressure that we want. Yes, yeah, cool. And then you guys should all be at a decent pressure barring. You're okay. Not great, not terrible, but you're gonna drop in temperature, which means you're gonna bump up your production. Let's give this a few minutes to stabilize and see how it goes. One other thing I'm gonna check is if there's an upgrade that helps with this. Um, increases the air production rate, it also increases the FE usage rate, but it reduces conversion efficiency. All right. Um, and I mean, you could have like a nice volume upgrade, that would be cool. I don't know what difference that really makes, but might be nice to have. All right, give this thing a few minutes. And we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back. So I've been playing with this a little bit, and I think just having heat pipes with heat sinks all around them is helping out for the most part. I think that's definitely where we want to be with this. So that is just a giant heat pipe line, keeping this thing cool-ish. So if I throw two more in there, you're gonna start building up some heat again, but we'll see where you stabilize at. That's gonna be the trick, is understanding where the stabilization point remains. And maybe what we'll do, because now the concern is more heat than anything else, right? Like, are you having a problem dissipating or what's the deal here? So you guys are actually nice and cool. And you're getting lots of pressure into the bars, so that's good. And he's still not quite at a, well, he's at 81, so he's getting there, he's getting there. But this guy is hopefully cooling more as he's getting more pressure pumped into him, right? Yeah, direct heat pipe does seem better than the vortex. Um, that could be true. That could be true. And I still need to automate turning this thing off, by the way. Still need to automate turning this thing off. Yeah, I think higher pressure makes the vortex tube work better. So I'm hoping that this thing like builds up more pressure and as a result gets starts cooling better because he seems to like he's already broken even on temperature maybe at 90. And then what I want to see is start come down as the pressure builds up in the uh, in the system here. Now these guys should be very nicely sitting right around the four point, yeah, and then he won't go above 4.9. That's cool. Yeah, so he's stable at 90 C with seven speed upgrades in him, which is a lot of air pressure, by the way. 463 max production in milliliters per tick. Sweet. So yeah, he's gonna stay. So like, even though we've got six bars of pressure on this side, we've only got, you know, 
that many bars of pressure on this side. Now, one thing I would like to do is another regulator module. Yeah, I think that's what I want. Um, and I'll tell you why. Because when we're not processing oil, we should turn that off too. Okay. So that's what we're going to do. Yes, this way? I think that seems, well, how about just this way? We could have two pointing like that. It's a little tricky getting them to line up the way you want them to. I'm having a little trouble getting it to line up exactly the way I want. But I'm sure we can figure it out. I guess worst case, we could just have it be like here, like I had. It almost feels like there's like one pixel <laughs> of where, of how I want it to be. I mean, I guess I could just. Do that, right? And then when I give you a redstone signal. Right? So you guys are at 4.82 pressure, right? I give you a redstone signal. This guy doesn't care about redstone signals as a reminder, right? He don't care. And wow, he's at 15 bars. So we're getting dangerously high on you. But now you are not getting pressure anymore. So in theory, I should be able to turn this guy off at 15. Oh wow, look at the look at the temperature, by the way. Temperature is going down because Vortex Tube has so much pressure in him. See that? That is cool right there. This vortex tube is really doing a jo good job of cooling this thing off now. That's what's up. That's what's up. And we're producing 522 milliliters. That's awesome. And he's still cooling, I think. Getting there. Getting there. But since he's getting close to the danger zone, we should turn him off. And what we should see is now all the pressure in the tube should balance. Because, well, no, you're actually using pressure here. Yeah, you don't really need to use pressure no more, do you? I should, I should have a pressure valve on you as well. That's, ow, ow, it's hot. <laughs> That's cool. These guys are hot. Nice. That is cool right there. Yeah, so the vortex tube definitely is better at cooling than the heat sinks, which, you know, would be expected. Now I can break that because we don't need him no more. And we could totally throw another valve on this guy too. But now, all the pressure that's in here should be, like, stable. See how it's not moving? Because it's not being used anymore. The vortex tubes use pressure. So because we're not processing oil, we turned off these vortex tubes, which, you know, also in turn turned off those, even if they were on, but they weren't. So now all the pressure is just chilling in our pressure chamber here and all the other stuff. So we have plenty of pressure, and it's not going to go anywhere because we're not using it, right? So I think that's pretty cool. I like that. I like that. I like that. All right. Well, that's a good wrapping up point. So for now, Dell 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We got a very advanced and got to play more with the heat mechanics, which honestly, I really like the heat mechanics. I really do. I like the whole temperature transfer thing that they got going on here. But I'm going to wrap up here and we'll come back next time and maybe play with drones. For now, Dell 20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.